Architecture Codex. If you want to see more, like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe. It would be a fair criticism of Architecture Codex to say that I emphasize skyscrapers in Manhattan too much. So in the interest of diversity, I will look at a skyscraper in Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Tower is a mixed-use skyscraper across the East River from Manhattan and will claim the title of tallest building in Brooklyn from the 68-story Brooklyn Point and the 51-story 11 Hoyt Street Towers. This one will be 93 stories tall and makes it the 10th tallest building in New York City, but it will be the tallest building in America outside of Manhattan. It was designed by the vaguely named firm Shop Architects, who we saw design the Steinway Tower in Architecture Codex video number 44. This project, like the Steinway Tower, started with the preservation of an old historic building, in this case the 1908 Dime Savings Bank by Mowbray and Uffinger. Now those are architects' names. That domed, romantic-era triangular temple to working-class banking is rich in Greco-Roman details carved into its marble facades. Its interiors are also exquisite, exemplifying a proud optimism that was characteristic of the borough. It was expanded by architects McCormick and Helmer in 1932 and was declared a city landmark in 1994. Of equal importance, preservation-wise, is the Junior's Cheesecake Restaurant nested between the Brooklyn Tower and the Dime Savings Bank. Junior's was opened there in 1950 by Harry Rosen at the site where his family operated a restaurant since 1929. The family still owns the building and was negotiating with JDS, the developers of the Brooklyn Tower, for the site with the idea of Junior's retaining a ground floor presence. The negotiations fell through, and so the site is currently off the market. And while baking operations have been moved elsewhere, the restaurant remains. Stand strong, Juniors. Without your cheesecake, it wouldn't be Brooklyn. The three buildings then will occupy the triangular site formed by Fleet Street, DeKalb Avenue, and Flatbush Avenue. I think the combination will be a dynamic bit of urban planning and architecture. I like the design of the tower with its bronze vertical mullions and thinner illuminated forms creating an elegant top. It reminds me of the earliest skyscrapers that mimicked Gothic towers as no other aesthetic for tall buildings existed. And there is a seemingly random series of vertical segments subtly distinguished by changes in the spacing and thickness of the mullions thrusting out of the earth across the glass slabs that give the facade a dynamic uplifting sketchiness as if it were a vibrating background in some Spider-Verse animated movie. The building almost feels like it is unfolding and expanding in front of you. So I like it probably for the same reason I like dynamic Baroque architecture, as it captures motion in still form. Some critics consider it an ode to the Art Deco buildings of Manhattan, and while that's a compliment, I don't see that. Greg Pascarilla of Shop Architects is quoted as calling it the Empire State Building of Brooklyn, which is suitable for the architect to assert, but only time will tell if it is true. The Brooklyn Tower itself, for a while known as 9 DeKalb Avenue, is Brooklyn's first super tall skyscraper, that is over a thousand feet tall, even though skyscrapers have been appearing in Brooklyn for the last couple of decades. The Brooklyn's top half is residential and aimed at the luxury market, although 19 of the 575 units were set aside as affordable to get some tax benefits. But it is unclear what affordable means, when most of the units are selling at between $875,000 for a studio and $8 million for a four-bedroom. I might like the design and the interplay with the bank and juniors. I might think that Brooklyn urban design 
might benefit from some skyscrapers, but I still find it hard to believe that someone would pay $8 million to be in Brooklyn. I mean, you really have to like cheesecake. Brooklyn was once a smaller independent city, but in 1898 it consolidated with four other boroughs to become Greater New York. It soon hit a consistent population of over two and a half million people, greater than the population of Manhattan. It was always the working class borough composed of residential neighborhoods like Flatbush, Prospect Park, Crown Heights, Bedford-Stuyvesant, and Canarsie. My mother, who grew up in the Bronx, would always use Canarsie as a metaphor for the end of the earth in such phrases as, you could hear him yell all the way to Canarsie. Regardless, Brooklyn was always subordinate to Manhattan. Even Brooklynites would refer to Manhattan as the city. For a time, most of the most famous people from New York were actually from Brooklyn. Even so, Manhattanites continued to look down on Brooklyn as unsophisticated. If you were to ask someone from Queens where they were from, they would mention their neighborhoods first, like Astoria, Forest Hills, or Flushing. But the proud people of Brooklyn would always lead with, I'm from Brooklyn. In the latter half of the 20th century, people who came from across the United States to make it in New York, New York, wanted to settle in Manhattan, but often could only afford Brooklyn. That changed in recent decades, and Brooklyn became an equally hot real estate market, as Manhattan seemed to work only for the very rich or the very poor. This pattern for gentrification was established in other neighborhoods previously in the greater metropolitan area, including Greenwich Village, the East Village, Hoboken, New Jersey, Tribeca, and then the Meatpacking District. This influx of people and money was possible in Brooklyn only because during the 1990s, New York City policing made many neighborhoods safer for all people. But gentrification is a two-edged sword, and while it lifts a neighborhood up economically, it tends to push out the people who were there originally. Even now, this battle is waging in certain Brooklyn neighborhoods, aggravating ethnic tension. There are many who find any skyscraper too Manhattan-y to really be part of Brooklyn. They might be correct in saying that the borough is losing its unique identity trying to be a clone of that place across the East River. But I have seen urban development that allows for a cluster of skyscrapers to exist while historic low-rise building districts continue to thrive nearby. And selling those air rights above the short old buildings actually facilitates the preservation of such neighborhoods. But like the claim that the Brooklyn will be the Empire State Building of the borough, only time will tell if this speculative real estate architecture urbanism will work. But if they really had chutzpah and they really was from New York, they would have called it the Brooklyn Tower. Forget about it. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex.